First thing we found is rubber gloves. Yeah, he was probably murdered. You know, going off-road has just gotten so darn expensive. But it doesn't have to be. I present to you my new 1991 Jeep Jerky. You're watching Diffloc, affordable off-roading. So this box of fun cost me $3,300, and I bought it relatively sight unseen. I was out of town when I saw this on Craigslist, my dad drove, picked it up for me, and now we're going to do a complete unboxing to see exactly what I got. These older Cherokees are known as the XJ Cherokee, and Jeep made over 2.9 million Cherokee XJs between 1984 and 2001. It's not exactly what you'd call rare. What is a little bit more unusual is finding a low mileage one in stock condition. This is arguably the best part of any Jeep of this era. It's the four liter Jeep straight six. And these engines are known for being bulletproof. And that's probably the number one reason I bought this thing. I love the four liter inline six Jeep engine as a lot of you guys do as well. And this one runs like a dream. This series is called Diffloc Affordable Off-Roading. Now obviously, affordability part is checked three grand, but what about the off-roading part? Now Cherokee XJs are known for their capability. Why? Because they've got front and rear solid axles from the box, almost nine inches of ground clearance. This one has underbody protection, a low range transfer case. We're gonna have fun in this thing. This vehicle was bought new here in Denver, Colorado in 1991 by a scientist in Boulder where we're located. Now this scientist owned this vehicle for most of its life and was meticulous about its records. But he passed away at some point and the vehicle ended up at a used car dealership. Now here's the deal. Well it smells like someone had a bleach party. It really reeks of like chlorine or ammonia or some kind of like really heavy duty cleaning product. I'm not saying he died in the car, or I'm really hoping he didn't die in the car, but I'm just stating the fact, he passed away, car reeks of bleach. Coincidence, or the perfect crime? Yeah, all joking aside, he did actually pass away. Um, it's got a clean title, I don't think he passed away in the car, I'm just being a, a little bit facetious here, but let's see, oh, first thing we found is rubber gloves. Yeah, he was probably murdered. That is probably what has happened here. Ooh, look at this. We've got like a, a medicine container with quarters. Got a lot of quarters. So we've got some original paperwork. Tire gauges, the original Chrysler Customer Care Owner's Guide here. Shrimp tempura. He was a sushi lover, clearly. We have uh, a knife holster, probably also part of the murder. Unwaxed dental floss. That's really gross. 1991. Customer Arbitration Board. Whoever owned this thing was absolutely anal retentive about keeping everything on this vehicle. We have notes on the capacity. Who does this? Who writes down their capabilities of their vehicle and keeps it with them at all times? That is crazy. Okay, so, so far we've done the glove box or the center console. Let's see what else we can find. I took a gamble on this car for a couple of reasons. First off, the price. Second of all, it's a 91 Cherokee with 91,000 miles. And third of all, it has a legendary engine, the four liter straight six. But I didn't really have a chance to get behind the wheel, see how it drove. We're gonna do that today. The initial impression that you get when driving these older XJs is just how much visibility there is. The windshield is huge. You can easily see out the side windows. The other interesting thing is these Cherokees are small. They're really small on the outside, but you get in here, tons of headroom, tons of legroom, both front and back. A great use of space, and I think part of that is due to the boxy design. It really is an effective way of designing a vehicle for maximum cargo capacity. On the road, this thing drives like a dream. The four liter provides 
enough torque to get you just about anywhere you need to go in a hurry. You've got your transmission button. I can go ahead and push this. It'll change the shift points. It really makes a big difference as well. The ride is super soft, partly because the rear shocks are completely blown. Those need to be replaced ASAP. But the rest of it's great. I've got cold AC coming out of the vents here. A nice squishy driver and passenger seat. Cruise control. What else do you really need? Okay, gloves are off. I think we are done with nasty stuff. I don't know why this car has so many sets of plastic gloves. Like, was it owned by Dexter at some point? But anyways, a previous owner gave us all sorts of gaskets and seals. I did notice that we've got a little bit of a rear main seal seep problem uh, by the transmission, so we'll have to fix that at some point. I just bought this. I know the fuel pump is humming a little louder than it probably should be. So we'll do a fuel pump replacement. Oh, look at this. This is so cool. These are headlight guards. I don't know if this is a factory option or a dealer installed option. Let me know if uh, you know what the situation with these are, but these go over the headlights and they're like little brush guards, those very 90s. Oh cool, look at this. This is the, uh, the uh, cargo cover. So that would slip in over here. Antifreeze. It's a Jeep thing you wouldn't understand. What about this? What the heck? Oh, it's a poncho. Holy frick, that's a big poncho. Oh, look at that. Service manual, engine, body, what is that? Electrical heating, AC, and emissions. These are like factory uh, factory shop manuals. That's pretty crazy. That's probably worth something. I'm glad he kept that. Okay, we, these are gonna be ditched immediately. What else do we have? It's like a box of books and stuff. Let's take a closer look. First off, what is this? Oh, awesome. Express yourself with Mopar accessories, Jeep and Eagle. Look at all these cool things. Look at all these hip people doing hip stuff in their Wranglers and their XJ Cherokees. We have a Jeep Cherokee owner's manual, 1991. And what is this? Warranty information. I don't imagine that this 91 Cherokee had a long warranty, if one at all. 1989, it is a map of Colorado. Let's see what the cool stuff to do in Colorado in the late 80s was. What is this? Llama packing, that's cool. Hiking with llamas in short shorts. Oh, look at this. The cool thing to do in the 80s was to be a little kid with no teeth, um, wearing ski goggles and no helmet. That's not gonna end well. Way cool, it's way cool. Let's see what else do we have in here. I bet in the manual, we're gonna find it marked up. And sure enough, sure enough, there it is. He underlined stuff. Who does that? Apparently the scientist dude. My recipes are for the birds. That's what I'm talking about. Is this like a how to cook a bird? Let's, let's take a look at one. Dove Delight, cracked corn, crushed dog bisque. This is food for birds. Who has a book for recipes for birds in their Cherokee? The, the stuff you find when you do some carchaeology. Now the rear bench in a Cherokee actually folds and we've got more stuff. Okay, looks like the carchaeology, as I'm calling it, is going to continue. So what is this? It's like a, what is that? It's like a super, super old school torque wrench, it looks like. A shovel. What are these things? Washers, we got washers, we have, uh, what the hell in the name of God is that? It's like some kind of spiky, cutty finger thing. God, someone was killed in this car. Fix a flat. That's like an extender for uh, the cigarette lighter. Spare lug nuts. In case your lug nuts fall off, I guess. Uh, what is this? I've got like a, I know there's a purpose for this and I don't remember what it is, but it's like a pinchy grabby thingy. Jumper cables and looks like we've got a jack. Okay, so nothing too frightening under here. Let's see what works in this 91 Cherokee, or I should say, let's see what still works. The interior is super, super clean. We only have 91,066 miles. Start her up. Buzzer works. And there goes the engine. Okay, so first off, power steering, yes. See if the horn. Horn is a go. We have a wiper and washer. That's for the rear, the rear wipes. Let's see if it washes. Oh, it squirts straight out the back. 
Ah uh, yes, perfect for tailgaters. We have a power transmission button. So I push this button and it changes the shift points. Looks like the light comes on there. I think that works. Clock is working and working well. Um, radio, Let's see if we got sound. Oh, oh yep, sound. With our AccuSound by Jensen premium sound system. Air conditioning. Yep, that's getting cold. Vents are good. Transmission. Yep, that's good. And then our four-wheel drive lever also works. We did try four-wheel drive. Over here I've got um, our window switches, uh, locking doors. Oh, listen to that. That is solid. Computer up here is dead. Now check this out. I can completely adjust the brightness of the visor lamps. You know guys, I don't even think the top of the line Mercedes do that. We have our sunglass holder. Oh god. What the heck? Like a severely muddy set of not even sunglasses. Those are regular glasses. No, nope, that's not the smell though. Wow, I'm really impressed. I think overall things seem to work pretty well. Okay, moving on. Let's see what else we have. This is the glove box. So this is my paperwork. Uh, just to be completely transparent, I did buy it with a clear title in the uh, seller's name, um, and I do have a proof of emissions test because we need that here in Colorado. Wow, look at this. He's got two sets of replacement bulbs. Like Jeep and trailer. Jeep. He's got everything labeled. And here we've got not one set, but two sets of fuses. That is really cool. That is super cool. Right, so the seat adventure doesn't end. Under the front seat, we have um, twine, nylon rope actually. Possibly another um, a murder weapon. Hopefully there's nothing too frightening under this one. Let's see. Oh, got something. That is a, um, a flare. 15 minute red safety flare. Oh, poor guy probably could have used this. Let the authorities know where he was. What are our plans with this little Jeep Cherokee? Well, I am going to take this thing all over the place here in Colorado off-road for our Diflock affordable off-roading series. We're gonna go into the mud, we're gonna go into the sand, we're gonna go rock crawling. Take this thing everywhere, it'll let us go. Because the fact of the matter is, not everyone has $40,000, $50,000 to spend on a Jeep Wrangler JL or, or a uh, 400 TRD Pro, right? We're gonna have fun with a $3,300 box on wheels and you're gonna join us. And we're back at the TFL HQ. Guys, I gotta tell you what, for just over $3,000, this is one hell of a lot of Jeep. And we're gonna have some fun off-road adventures on Diflock, affordable off-roading here at TFL. Check it out. I even have the original Pentastar on the key and a key fob to unlock this thing. How cool is that? Well, as always, guys, this is Tommy. We'll see you here next Saturday at the Fastlane Car, where we're taking this thing off-road. Got to try on the poncho. Best part of the purchase, I think. Look, I matched the Jeep. Definitely intentional.